Hey guys, welcome to this video. We will be reviewing the GCSE paper number two, which was done today. Now, sir, initial reactions from your students first. Well, I haven't, didn't get to speak to my, my students. I was uh, busy with something, so I wasn't able to, to go out, but looked at the paper. Um, there are, I would say as a whole, like apart from the last few questions, as a whole, it was, I mean, a decent paper, mm -hmm. um, but within the decent one, and obviously, Depends how good your math skills are, algebra skills are. Um, you may make you know, you're going to make mistakes down, down the line. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of preparing yourself, like the predicted papers, they're quite good. They are. Yeah. I would say um, first class maths, maths genie ones you talked about. Yeah, they were really, really quite they, so on point. It, the ones that the first class left out, the maths genie com complimented. So. Vice versa. So together, um, they they made good papers. Yeah, the quadratic sequence yeah. came up. That wasn't the maths genie one. Mm. Um, there was the the probability one. Similar, not similar one came up. Um, can I just say I did get a chance to speak to the students, okay. and um, this is what it was like, guys. You know, they were I was watching them coming at the example, and every single one of them, as soon as they turned the corner, a smile. And I was like, wow, from a distance. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then I said, how, first did how did it go? How did it go? And they were like, yes, so it was good. It was good. And I just felt, wow, you know, I felt so happy. I've never, ever, well, <laughs> I've forgotten the last three years, you know, with COVID and everything, because, you know, you, you don't remember them coming at the exam like that. But that felt nice. It felt, mm -hmm. I felt happy for them. I actually felt so happy that that motivation that they would feel towards paper free now and the rest of their exams, you know, they're going to have it. Because, you know, you need to feel good about something to make you feel happy about doing the next thing. Yeah. But they were really, really happy. So we've got smiling students there. They said it was a great paper. Although everyone was talking about this last question. Shall we start on that? Shall we start well, on Funny enough, uh, one kid did come into my room at the end. I wasn't sure that the maths exam just finished. I was, my mind was elsewhere. And he said, I said, can I show you this question? I'm like, yeah, go ahead. Um, and they do this and pull again and all that. And uh, we just... You know, so we do from memory. Yeah, he just drew from memory. And that's, I, the, that's the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about that question. Is it, was it a polygon where, where you had to work at the area? Yeah, and it was used surge. Now, and, look, we've had a look at that question now, yeah? It brought memories of last year's that circle one. What would you say about last that? Last year's circle one was, was it to do with sectors? Well, to do with sectors. So in that sense, there was, there was quite a lot of you know, algebra rearrangement needed. But this is more, more heavy on surge. surge. It was and, very similar to that, but it wasn't as difficult, I would say. Because mm. uh, I had a quick look at that one. At first glance, it does seem like, oh my God, is it one of those short questions? But it wasn't enough that they felt, oh, no, I couldn't do this. I couldn't do it. No, top set students. But when I first looked at it, like, first instinct was like polygons, angles. Yes, so, obviously, poly various angle, topics. How many topics? Angle. I counted about what did I count? I counted angles in polygons, Pythagoras to use yeah, that, on that one. That came in. Areas of knowing areas of shape. So, the area of a triangle, area of a square. square that was there. And, and knowledge of surge, obviously. It. Because you have to break and down surge, that yeah. uh, one of the sides. Uh, you'll have to find and you'll. The thing, I think, um, the way we worked at the end was um, work out the area of the, the little triangle that sticks out, yeah. four of them. And, and, multiply and then multiply it. And then work and out add the, it to the area of the square. That's, that's, that's what it was. That's yeah. the highlighted question 18, first of all. So, if you have a look at question 18 here. I'll tell you why I picked this one, guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'll tell you why. So first glance is when I first looked at it, oh, it's like oh, you can't just straight away dive into it. You have to think about it, and once you look at it, and it's like, then things come and come to you. And I said, mm. okay, if I was if I was to make A and B the subject yeah. in terms of C from the ratios given, then you could just substitute them in and simplify, it, and you get the answer. I mean, I want to keep it general, right? rather than go into the specifics, because okay. obviously we've got to be a little bit careful yeah. about how much we reveal about these questions because the you know, schools want to use them next year for their students and their mock exams. But in general, these are very interesting ratio questions. I've seen that the uh, higher paper is moving away now, and it's certain now it's moved away from those find in a given ratio question, and it's more of this algebra style of questions, uh, you know, where you have to make equations and merge them together to have a different representation. So this is becoming yeah, very... More, and in more fact, deep understanding More deep ratios. understanding of ratio. And ratio actually came up, I've, I counted three times on three different questions, on the vectors question, which vectors anyway have that, and we'll look at that yeah. separately. Um, but there was another question on um, question 23, ratios appeared again. Uh, so if we just have a quick skip to 23, oh, yeah. so you had that one uh, where you've got these 
different triangles and you're given the areas to, to find in those ratios. So it's coming up uh, quite often. So mm. going forward, ratios is something that students will need to spend a lot more time on. I mean, with ratios, once you get the basics of the ratio and of the way, like how to split ratios into given amount, basic understanding of ratios, once you've got that, you know, I'm quite comfortable with that. Then do exam then, questions. Then go, you know, get a collection of as many exam questions as you can on ratios. And they will all do variously. Now you got, you got enough now, pass me what people have enough now on, on problem solving with ratios and then keep practicing them. Make sure your understanding is, is, is more, you know, gets more, more stronger mm. and more deeper. Mm. Um, and then that's the way to prepare, I would yeah, say, for would, Because the question. ratio is, and I think some of the new textbooks will need to reflect these because I just feel that some of the older textbooks when the new scheme of work came in doesn't really contain enough content that prepares mostly it's, it's just to get them to get again the basic understanding in in, in place we we'll go to question 22 because that was an interesting one no one really mentioned it yet but maybe because it was only two marks right mm. but it's a probability question there was a similar similar one in one of the past papers mm. um it was a, it was a two marker or I mean, one okay. marker i think it was um, one marker okay so i mean the number of marks obviously reflect that students will come across this and um, quite a number of them may not be able to access that question but what makes that question difficult it's doing it end times so normally they give you a fixed amount of times that you roll the dice or you know flip the coin whatever but here it says you do it end times it's an unknown number of times and what about comprehension i mean that's a very wordy question how many students will be able to read something like that and actually understand what they might need to do well, what is right near the end for that reason, I would say, because if, if it was where they can easily access it, it would, be, would have been more near the front. So that's like third question from the end, is mm -hmm. it? 22 and there's 24, I think. Yes, yeah, so that's the yeah, same to the last. Yeah, third, the third question from, from the last. And so, it's two marks, but so, you know, the marks won't be jeopardized because it's only two marks. And if you, uh, you know, get it wrong, then it won't be too hard on the overall score. It's easy if you know it or if you don't know it yeah, basically. Okay. So you don't but I, I feel that a lot of students will read that and not understand it. A lot of teachers might even, if they were to look at that the first time and be asked to mm. explain but, that on the board. But, but then again, if we had done similar type you know, questions bef beforehand, then you will know what to do. Of course. And you said you saw it in the Yeah, I saw it in one of the past It's not this exact, always, but similar, similar one. Okay. Um, Right, going forward now for revision for paper three. Let, by the way, guys, please let us know what you thought of this paper, uh, whether the questions that we've highlighted were ones that you guys also found, you know, str a struggle. I don't want to use the word struggle because the paper was great, okay, but I mean, maybe challenging. The, the vectors one was a nice, I would say it was a straight, like, it was a nice one. Uh -huh. They could have made it a lot more difficult. Yeah, the vectors, yeah, usually the vectors have the uh, extension. It's, it's that you like, have to do. this is the vector type of question that question. used to be in, in, the old, in old, old spec. School. It's like, they give you a ratio of the side, then you work out, you know, the vector, you work out another vector. Um, it's where you, it's, it, it gets hard when you have, have to introduce unknown constants. Yeah. And then you have to form some equation. Oh, yeah. wow. That's oh, wow. when cool. it gets really complicated, but they have left those. That was, that was nice. Yeah. All right. Very briefly, before we uh, um, finish the video, can we just touch up on the foundation paper? Um, I've, again, I've highlighted the first eight questions on the higher paper were the last exactly the same as the last eight questions except the last one actually it's actually question 20 to 27 on the foundation paper and then question 28 on the foundation paper was actually a higher worthy question with the graphs so it's a question that would usually appear on the higher paper but surprisingly it actually didn't appear on the higher paper that, that's the question that would yeah. normally appear on the higher paper is um, the foundation paper getting harder and uh, and the message i mean if you're a year 10 student out there and you're on the foundation you know should you be looking to work that little bit harder uh, i think a little bit much more i think i think i think so. in class give it a bit more i think class, def definitely so that so. you can convince your teachers your schools to get you on the higher tier because actually if i'm being honest guys i know some of you don't like to hear it. i mean whatever grade you get whatever difficulty of maths that you face obviously is for your level uh, some people are good at maths some people aren't some people struggle through it um and i, and I get that and i respect that uh, but if you do, what, you will have a better chance of passing maths if you get yourself on the higher paper. It's simply because of the number of questions you'll have to get answer, uh, number of marks you'll have to get um, will be uh, far lower than what's on the um, foundation paper itself, where you need something around 60, 65% to get grade four on the edXL. Um, whereas on the higher paper, you'll need around less than 20% sometimes. 
All right. So, and like I said, if you got those eight questions where they have the commonality between them, if you could answer just those eight questions on the higher paper while you're sitting the higher paper, then that would be more than enough to get you a grade five even. Right. So revising for paper three now. Obviously, all the topics that didn't come up, go and scan those predictive papers, practice papers, whatever you want to call them. Um, do the questions that weren't on this paper. So give me an example of something that didn't come up that we were expecting. Because you can't really expect anything to come up on a paper two and a paper three specifically because they could be mixed. Quadratic equations. Quadratic equations, simultaneous with quadratic. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. We had that. yeah no, 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 the inequality we had on the paper one. The paper one was the last question. Yeah, it was on inequality. So, um, I mean, we can provide a list maybe in the comments. And one thing I had with one of the students, someone on the commentator, gave a whole list of topics. So, yeah. guys, if you could provide something like that, that would really help us out and it would help, obviously, the student community but, out there. And I'll just, you know, um, I'm going to say, you know, good luck with the third paper. So, get revising, one week to go, and um, all the best. Yes, all the best.